And we're going live in three, two. All righty then. What is up, everyone? Welcome back. It's it's Monday, and this is our stay at home open mic. My name is Richie David Marufo. I'll be your MC and host tonight, and I'm coming to you live and alive from the nine one five. We are more than two hundred episodes in, and we've been doing this online show since April of twenty twenty. In fact, we have a whole archive of episodes you can go back and check. Uh, find your favorite performers, find a bunch of new ones, both local to the El Paso region, but also from all around the world. Tonight is no different. Uh, so first of all, if this is your first time here, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, we've been around for a while, but uh, if this is your first time, it's better late than ever, right? So uh, this is an open mic like any other open mic, um, except it's online. So if you want to perform, all you have to do is sign up. We do have a link to sign up in the description of the video. We do this every week. So if you just want to like test it out first, see how it goes, then just hang out with us on YouTube. Um, that's the other thing. Um, unlike a, tr a traditional in-person show, Performing to an unknown audience is, is kind of trippy sometimes, you know, we're performing to the unknown masses, you know, anyone can tune in. Um, but something that does help, this is a live show. So if you're tuned in live, let us know you're here with us. It definitely helps. It's really cool to see who is listening along with us. Um, a lot of the performers hang out in the live chat. So if you want to say, you know, if you want to send compliments, uh, questions even you know let us know you're here and as always i try my best to give you guys shout outs during the show um this is a community this is a network so performers are going to also be sharing their own events so that includes featured readings book releases uh maybe new content that they've uploaded ways that you can support them so performers you guys already know this i know i know you do it week in and week out and you're such pros at it but you know just don't forget you know someone may be watching you for the first time so that's a great opportunity to make a new fan maybe a new friend and um the other things is um the rules right we don't talk about it too much uh when you sign up i do have a um in the first paragraph before you can start filling out your information, just kind of a rundown of the rundown of the show. Um, I think we we have about five to seven minutes per performer is a very casual rule. Just uh, there's a certain point where we know that it's, it's, it's hard to, to um, start a new piece, right. Without like going too long. I mean, that's just so everyone gets a chance, gets their time on the, on the mic. And then of course you guys are more than welcome to share your social media pages if you have any links to upcoming events all that great stuff so uh the other thing is if you do want to be kept up to date with these things you can do several things one is you can subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't done so where are you we are so close to getting to 600 subscribers and uh you know once we hit 600 we can aim for a thousand because that's kind of one of the goals on youtube uh it'd be really nice to expand our audience if you guys know anyone who likes this kind of stuff, uh, spoken word poetry, storytelling, music, singer-songwriting, original stuff, covers, um, send it to them. Send it to a friend. Ask them to subscribe. And, uh, of course, we have this live show every week, but uh, we also have additional content that I put out every now and then, um, including uh, videos from a bunch of performers that you see at this show, uh, maybe at live open mic nights that I've recorded. Or studio sessions. I have a bunch of studio sessions that I have recorded that I will be editing. Uh, by the way, this is kind of an aside, but uh, I am looking for help. So if, if you have any talented video editors or aspiring video editors, uh, you guys can help me a lot because I, I have a mountain of, of stuff. And between teaching and doing open mics and some and some other uh, service stuff that I do, it's a little hard to keep up with all the content. So um, it's there. And I definitely... The people who record that stuff deserve their stuff to be heard um, in, our, in our network. So just a quick plug. If you guys are interested, you can just contact me online. Uh, you can find me here. My name, Richie Barrufo, or Instagram, Deadwall Reveries. Of course, you can also find us on social media, Bardwar Open Mic Series, BWOMS, B-W-O-M-S, and uh, catch us at our live shows. We have a couple this week. Uh, we have, we're going to be at Mono Bar on Tuesday. And Friday, we're going to be at Craft Within Brews. We're working with an amazing local visual artist by the name of Kristen Apodaca. Her art is featured all over the cities, um, El Paso and New Mexico, uh, Las Cruces. She has a project called Love Letters. Um, and it's it's a, a woman-focused um, 
celebration, I guess, of, of the arts. And so it's just love letters, a lot of writing. It's going to be like a zine release. It's going to be maybe quarterly. I forget I forget what you said on that, but uh, that's going to be this Friday at Craft Rhythm and Brews. So it's going to be a special event where you're going to invite contributors to to read their work, plus other stuff. Plus we'll have our regular open mic. So, all right, with that said, um, oh yeah, I want to give a shout out to Urban Cowboy Poet. Well, he's still here at UCP. It's been a while. You know, uh, he's he's doing some traveling right now. So it's not the easiest to, to jump on, but you know, we popped in for a little bit and it was just really, that's also why we started a little late. We were chatting and I'm like, oh wait, guys, we have a show we got to do. So just, I want to give a shout out to Urban Cowboy Poet. He does have a YouTube channel that you guys can check out. Um, but that's enough of me. Here I go, yapping away. Even before this, I was just talking about that. Um, sometimes it's stalling because sometimes you have another performer who we have not seen in a while. And, uh, you know, they just give them some time to get ready, make sure they're ready to go. And so we're going to go ahead and kick things off today in San Diego. Uh, our next performer will be visiting El Paso at the, near the end of the month. We're super excited about that. He uh, He's visited before and uh, did some featured shows, some recordings. I have all that content out as well. So uh, he's been doing a lot of great stuff too online um, uh, at Meet About College as well. So without further ado, let's kick things off with Propaganda Poet. What's up, man? Good to see you here with us. Glad to be here with you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you all for being amazing and being so like welcoming and you guys are all awesome man i know i don't know you guys are all awesome thank you i don't even know what else to say uh i'm sorry if i uh take off early i don't mean to i wasn't going to be that guy who was going to just read and leave uh but you guys want me to read and that felt really good so thank you for that um i'm going to start with a cover poem actually uh celebrating women because we should celebrate women every day all the time not just for a fucking month. <clears throat> Perhaps the world ends here by Joy Hardoon. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor, falling down selves, and as we pour ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are all laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. Uh, and then I'm going to do... Um, a, no, a short poem of mine, and then another cover poem, I think. I'm feeling cover poem tonight. Uh, this is mine. This is called Love Letters to Myself. Ground Zero. A moving target is harder to hit, especially when you're trying to shoot yourself. One, I miss you like lungs miss oxygen when it leaves my breath for hydrogen. Two, I miss you like the beach misses the ocean at low tide as the waves hide the currents, ignoring the climate crisis as less than urgent. Three, I miss you like the stars miss the sky when the city lights cry so high, the lights drown out the moon even at high tide. Four, I miss you like my body misses my soul, like the two fold into one goal, like discovering a new meaning of whole. Five, I miss you like the nomad misses the road, like the wanderer misses the journey, like the explorer misses the unknown. Six, I miss you like sick misses home. Seven, I miss you like sun sins when they're trying to atone for that time that I went off and left you alone when I chose to instead let my lower self roam. Eight, 
I even miss the forest for the trees, the cart for the horse. I milt you. I miss you like guilt misses remorse. Nine. In time we find what misses the mind, pierces the heart, and strikes the soul. Ten. Even then, after all that we've been through, I even miss when I miss you. Should we happen to find a new way through, I will make this promise come true. No more will I harass the past for future fails, turn my head and tuck my tail, distract my facts from truths unveiled. No more will I run. No more will I run. And then I'm going to do uh, one more cover poem. Uh, this poem has become part of my curriculum. I use it to teach uh, definition essays. Uh, this and a podcast about racism in the country and shit like that. But the poem is by this amazing poet from El Paso, Texas, named Kit Wren. Uh, the title of the poem is The Zeroth Impression, A Theory of Social Relations. I wish to relieve one pressure you have felt and replace it immediately with another. Do not worry about first impressions. The first impression is nothing. It is easily overridden and constantly amended, often forgotten entirely. Much more important is the zeroth impression. You have no control of the zeroth impression. You have no way to influence it or even access it. It is being made right now, independently, in places that you have never even driven through. You see, as friends tell new friends of old friends, those new friends must depend on imagination and stock images to complete the story themselves. You are a placeholder name in so many stories. I'm gonna say that again. <clears throat> you are a placeholder name in so many stories. There are mental images of you based off of absolutely no evidence. People you have never met have strong and inflexible opinions about you and what you should have done that one time. One day, you will meet someone who knows of you only from a bystander's account of the worst day of your life. If he or she makes that connection, they will be close to starstruck, trying to reconcile the physical facts with their own understanding. You must see they have carried this cartoon of you this caricature from a tourist trap for a long time. It has been rolled up, put in moving boxes, and subsequently unpacked in new domiciles. They may have even added their own twists to the story. You see, it is their story now. You are now the protagonist of a modern urban legend. Do not fight against the zeroth impression. Do not dwell on it. Don't justify yourself. Don't try to give context. Do your best to see the honor, not the offense. While no one can be all things to all people, you might find that, thanks to the zeroth impression, being many things to enough people is astoundingly easy. I read that three times today, just now, and twice in my class, because we actually went over that lesson today. So that's why I wanted to share that with y'all. So. Thank you for being amazing, all of you, and um, I look forward to listening to as many of you as I can before I have to finish this lesson plan. Very cool. Thank you so much, Propaganda Poet. Awesome. What is up, everyone? I see a lot of uh, more people have been tuning in. Uh, yes, give it one more time, Propaganda Poet. Uh, you can see him come to El Paso again uh, towards the end of the month we'll definitely promote that um, and it's super cool I, I was talking about the connections and the threads and there it is right there you have poetry from Kit here in El Paso being read and studied in college in San Diego that's super cool um, I love that <laughs> um, yeah he's in a curriculum <laughs> why did I read that in the Ralph Wiggum voice I'm in a curriculum. Okay, no, that's not that's not the point. But in the span of when when we started the show, we have a, two more people who joined up. First of all, we have the our friend Prasanna Kumar in the house. He runs the Fertile Brains Open Mic, so I see him added to the list. We also have Danny Shea in the house. Okay, Danny Shea signed up. Awesome. 
the Danny show on Instagram. I, I remember you from the open mic at Old Sheepdog. Good to have you here with us. Uh, welcome. So I will update the list. I'll post it here so you guys can see the order. Everyone will be performing in. Um, but we're going to go ahead and keep going again. If you guys are here with us tuning in in the live stream, just uh, let us know you're here. Say hi. Uh, for example, what's up, Tony G? Good to see you here every single week with us. Awesome. We have also we have Julian Matthews in the house. He said, great set, propaganda poet. Julian also, of course, performer poet. Um, always great to see you as well. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and continue this show. Next up. Uh, you've seen him before. If you tune in to these shows, he usually kicks off the show in uh, Denver, Colorado. In fact, uh, he's the beat poet laureate. Hold on, I'm, I hear myself. Let me let me mute myself there. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Let me mute myself. All right, we're going to kick things off in Denver. He's the beat poet laureate of Colorado. Uh, he is Mike Sindler, our very own lighthouse. Go ahead and take it away when you're ready, Mike. Let's hey, see. thanks, Richie. Um... Yeah, that was really special uh, propaganda, doing a kid's piece like that and actually introducing it into curriculum. That says just about as much about this uh, global family of poets that we've created as anything I can think of. Uh, what a wonderful moment. Uh, uh, speaking of wonderful things, I am going to put up lighthousewriters.org which is a wonderful wonderful organization doing all kinds of great things for whatever kind of writing and right now we're still gearing up for lit fest coming in june and if y'all want to put good energy out there for me i'm trying to get into a workshop with jane hirschfield which i would very much like to get a chance to study with her. She's doing one and Mark Doty's doing one. And we, they don't they don't play. They get serious people at, at Lighthouse. So but uh we'll see. We'll see. Uh I'm also gonna start with a piece for um women's history. And uh this is just you know, trying to be an advocate and, you know, what I see, especially I was behind a bar for a long number of years. And this is something that I saw all too much that really irritates me. It's called She Was Trying. She was trying to be nice, just an innocent compliment by way of a thank you. He heard it as an invitation, let hopes of obsessive pursuit, let hopes become obsessive pursuit. At first, she ignored unwanted chattering, became uncomfortable as the level increased, found herself looking for allies or exits. No one seemed to apprehend rising level of anxiety and fear, refusing repeated offers to buy her a drink and get up and dance to go somewhere quiet and talk. What could she have said or done to make him feel this was appropriate? She thought back and found nothing. What was she missing? Though blameless, took herself to task. She'd done nothing to make him act like an ass. It was on him. She got up to use the toilet. He asked, where are you going? How is this his business? She found a seat on the other side of the bar. Within minutes, he was invading her space again. Finally, as nicely as she could, she asked him to leave her alone. Fury flashed, flushing his face. He leaned in menacingly, growling, Hey, I bought you a drink. You led me on. What's wrong? I'm a good guy. You should get to know me. The bartender finally registered the fear in her features, told the pest to get back or get the hell out. He retreated a few stools down, slammed down shot after shot, getting sloppier and sloppying her. She prayed he would find another focus for his toxic insecurity other than another unaware victim. Noting a moment he absented his predatory perch, she cho chose to use this time to make a subtle retreat. Heading towards the parking lot, keys wedged between fingers, fondling a pocketed bear spray can, while she was unlocking the door, she heard his gruff mumbled roar. Hey, why are you leaving? Don't go without me. Don't be like that. You owe me a hug at least. 
In a transformative moment, his threat turned into a scream, aerosol entering nostril and throat, tears rained from inflamed eyes, a well-placed kick found him sprawled out on the asphalt, wheeling wildly, lashing blindly, howling, bitch, I'm going to kill you, between wheezing gas. Despite her palpable fear and anger, that impotent epithet brought laughter, prone bully bawling in a pool of puke. She considered calling the cops, but it was doubtful he learned a lesson. It was doubtful he learned a lesson, but knew it probably wouldn't help. Odds were against a just intervention. Experience had taught her all too well. Patriarchy rarely comes to women's aid. No need for hours of defending against intimations. She brought it on herself, gave him the right to act animalistic. Resisting the urge to roll right over, she wheeled around, driving away, her whole body still shaking in shock. Rage slowly simmered down to relief, still struggling to remember a misstep leading to this dark transformation. After all she had been through, lucky just to be alive, she still turned inside to find blame as society had taught her. With no reason to accept shame, she burned from the sting of slander, hearing the morning news announce, a man was attacked in a downtown parking lot and left for dead, victim of an unhinged, drugged-out assailant. Drunk on unearthed sympathy, soon he will be repeating the pattern, cycle rolling over another victim. Resigned to inability to unveil his culpability, that afternoon she treated herself to a new can of ursine repellent. Okay. And I'm going to put on the hat and I'm going to read a couple great poems by wonderful women poets. Um, the first one, uh, just don't find many poets in history better than Maya Angelou, do we? Good as it gets. This is called Phenomenal Woman. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please and to a man, the fellas stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. And damned if she was not a phenomenal woman. No two ways about that. And this is uh, by another phenomenal uh, woman poet who has been to Lighthouse for lit fest in the past and boy if you if she's there if you ever get a chance to just talk with this woman oh my god she's amazing it's mary rufel and this is called women in labor women who lie alone at midnight because there is no one else to lie to women who lie alone at midnight at noon in the laundromat destroying their own socks women who lie alone at midnight Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates. 
Women who lie alone at midnight as the first furl of starlight furls the moon with nair. Women who lie alone at midnight sending a postcard bearing the face of a bawling infant who cries, I am for the new. Women who lie alone at midnight reciting the names of shoes. Women who lie alone at midnight spurting unjustified tears, the kind that runs sideways, never reaching the mouth, the kind you cannot swallow. Women who lie alone at midnight singing, breast away the burden of my tender and afterwards burp. Women who lie alone at midnight obeying the laws of physics, women who let their dreams curl at the end, women in a monastery of flamingos, women who die alone at midnight, contributing to the end, to lost time, to the rain and flies, seeing the bird they saw trapped in the airport survive by the water fountain. What's more, try it sometime. It works. Okay, thank you very much. Right on. Thank you, Mike, as always, uh, for the performances, the characters, too, the reading it all out. Um, yes, and did remind me that, well, I guess uh, Propaganda Poet mentioned, too, at the beginning, it's, it's Women's History Month, right? Uh, this Friday is International Women's Day, but uh, doesn't mean we have to celebrate on just those months and days, right? We can do it any anytime. We welcome any themed poetry and, again, the cover poems because uh, – as a kid always likes to say, and I always like to say how he likes to say it, if musicians can do it, so can poets, right? Uh, it's also a really great way to introduce maybe like uh, popular writers to new people, uh, which reminds me, we do have a bunch of students tuning in live. Uh, shout out to everyone who has been saying hello in the chat with us. Uh, Alondra, Nayeli, welcome, welcome. Uh, once again, if you guys are here for the EPCC Tejano Passport uh, code, I'm going to ask a couple of things. So I did leave a message in the live chat. You can see it. I might even, um, maybe I'll pin it or I'll leave it in the, in the actual comments. But if you guys want to get that credit, uh, just stick around for as long as you can. Listen to as many performers as you can. And then send me an email. I left my email there for you guys, but you can find me under the school directory. You can just look up my name, Marufo, M-A-R-R-U-F-O. You can also message me through the barbed wire social media pages, or you can find me on Instagram, Deadwall Reveries. My email is R-D-M-A-R-R-U-F-O at gmail.com. Shoot me an email and just let me know what stood out to you. You know, who did you enjoy? What did you like? Um, and then I'll, I'll follow up with, with the code. That way so you guys can get that credit. So pretty cool to have you guys here. Um, all right. Have a good night, Greg. Good, good to see you. UCP, Urban Cowboy Poet. I have videos of him reading his poetry in my studio that I didn't release. Anyway, sorry. There's stuff going on here on Zoom and the live chat on my phone. Lots going on. But again, so if you're an EPCC student and you're here for the Tejano QEP passport code, let me know. Um, just like I said, stick around, shoot a message, and uh, we're going to go ahead and kick things off. We're going to come back to El Paso for our next performer. She's uh, somewhat of a local literary celebrity, right? She's been published all over the place. She has a couple of collections out. So I know a lot of people definitely look up to her uh, for guidance and is definitely one of the, the best uh, ways to promote some of the words and just seeing all the work that she's been able to produce out of the workshops over the years. Um, and of course, as as uh, Fernando, my co-host in real life, uh, most most of the time likes to say she's not only a master poet, she's a master gardener, <laughs> and we dig it. So it's Robin Schofield. Go ahead and take it away when you're ready, Robin. Hi, Richie. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. I'm going to read some poems uh, tonight. Uh, the first one from uh, an old unpublished manuscript. I do have some books out, but I do have... Uh, some that are unpublished. I thought this one would go places because it's all about mental health. Uh, it's called Diurnal Disturbances. And this one, uh, I sent a whole lot of poems out in the fall, and this is the only one that got published. But it turns out it's in a nice little publication called The Fourth River, which is out of Chatham University in Pittsburgh. They did a, uh, a an issue on disability. 
So this is called bipolar in relation to the globe. The brain inhabits the Arctic Circle where polar bears prowl for seals. Along the Tropic of Cancer, the torso changes to a yellow forest covered in kudzu. Toward the liver, jungles spread over the far south. Primitive and prevailing, winds circle, fortune waits, and refusal. Along the Tropic of Capricorn, to those unlucky pirates in love with the trade winds of La Nina, who will be man enough to venture into the limbs hung with choking vines over mighty rivers stirred by piranha? Hands stoke the fires near thatched huts against the damp of jaguar night. Down dry mountains serrated as jawbones, the legs cover ground and the feet plunge to Cape Horn through penguin shores to oceans of ice. So um, they, uh, they're they also a, a, a kind of a nature and place journal. So a good, uh, good journal for me. So um, a long time ago now, I think it was in... 2012, I published this book, Sunflower Cantos, from Mouthfeel Press. And um, when I was writing the Narciso poems, this char the character that's in this book named Canta Lily, I wrote some new poems for, for her. So um, I'm going to read, since it's National Woman's Month, I'm going to read uh, a couple of those. And this one, I think, was published in uh, Phantom Drift a while back. It's called Cantalily Imagines the Creation. The goddess starts from a field of flowers, stars on stems. She whittles down the daisy from original darkness. With white light, she began the inflationary period, and it was like bread rising on instant yeast, and it gave rise to the jitters and bumps that are quasars that bounce out like so many basketballs. And it gave rise to the young stars that burned out and left the chemicals of life, carbon and oxygen, to mix it up with hydrogen, not aloof helium. While she spins out the galaxies from supernovae, glitter bombs exploding in the heavens, the Milky Way opens like a book before her, Andromeda, a small whirlpool in her eyesight. Cantilily looks for our little cosmos on the body of the goddess, and she finds it on the left toenail of the smallest toe, the blue and green earth, and all our busy anthills in a haze of smoke. <clears throat> And then this one, I don't know, I'm not sure about this one. It's kind of a retelling of a fairy tale. Encounter with the Frog Queen. When Cantalily was a child, she lost her golden ball down a pond. She was inconsolable, as a child will be, crying so much louder than Raven that a frog plopped down beside her. What is the matter, little one, the frog said. Oh, frog, could you please go down into the pond, as I cannot. Please retrieve my golden ball. Yes, said the frog, if you will go with me. Cantalily, at seven, thought, this frog is talking nonsense, and ran back home as fast as she could. The next day, Cantalily went to look for the bright ball, hoping it would surface. Again, the frog said she would go and invited Cantalily down, down, down. Again, Cantalily ran away. The third day, she asked the heron father what to do. You must mind the frog queen. Be patient, pay close attention, and do whatever she does. Cantalily was amazed that the heron referred to the frog this way. So she hurried to the pond, this time afraid but eager, for she wanted her favorite toy back. 
No frog appeared, so she struck up a conversation with Crow, who also missed the shiny ball. He whistled and warned her, here comes the frog queen. Cantalily felt cold and suddenly found herself squatting. Then her legs felt long and longer. She could see the many dimensions. The pond felt like home. At first, the passage was narrow and dark. Cantalily found that she could take in lungfuls of yeah, water and be followed. The downward plunge took a long time. Then she emerged into an underwater cave lit by glowing rocks, a bioluminous presence. There was the Frog Queen. She spoke in a curious chant, which Cantalily heard like a bass guitar throughout her body. As deep as you go, the higher the sky, for wandering will be a lifelong quest. As far as you go, the nearer to home, for lonely you never will be. The more you talk, the fewer the words, for Raven will be by your side. The more you walk, the less you lose, for the waters will follow you. The riddle I leave you with, how many drops in the pond? And then for my cover poem, I'm going to read the poems of, uh, I'm going to read from Jennifer Clement, who's a great friend of mine. And um, she's also president emeritus of the Interna International Pen. Um, and she wrote this book called The Newton Sailor. And it came out in English and Spanish. And because um, it was published in Mexico. So um, some of the poems uh, concern Carolyn Herschel. And you may have heard of William Herschel, the famous astronomer. Well, he had a sister who was maybe even a better astronomer than he was. So this is, I'm going to read, um, let's see, this is a long poem. So I'm going to read uh, the first two parts of it. Yeah. Carolyn Herschel discovers her first comet, 1786. One, I saw the blue coma, nucleus, head and dust, heard the graveled wind, the race of stones. I have studied the threshold of horizon, sutured brinks where ships used to fall over the earth's edge forever. Now, the sailors always return. Now the sailors always return. Two, it's dusk. I say this every day. William says, let's stand beneath the oak. We plow the night between winter and October. He finds the things I almost see. And I'm going to read some more out of that, uh, one of these during this month. And here's a poem about her childhood, also by Jennifer. Comet Child. Seven-year-old Carolyn is half mad with stories. She says, some nights have millions of black ants filling the sky. All day she experiments with snails and salt and speaks her science. Clouds are water ghosts. The flower is full of spider's milk. Cocoons fall from the moon and the world is round. She's even heard of Galileo. The word sing songs in her. Galileo, Galileo, Galileo. Girl of twigs, Carolyn is cousin to the shadows. At night, she sucks at strands of hair to bleed the darkness out and clean its dark, dark smell of bark and monkey. So those are a few poems by uh, Jennifer Clement. And I really recommend her as a poet. And uh, she had a fascinating life as well. She's just got a memoir out called The Promised Party. She grew up uh, next door to uh, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera house. And uh, this is a fascinating life.
Um, so, oh, and she knew uh, uh, um, Basquiat. She's written a previous memoir about that. So, uh, do try to come to the Tumble Words Project at one o'clock Mountain Time on Saturdays. We always have a good time. We always have a good presenter. And it doesn't really matter. You can write whatever you want to. That's Tumble Words, number one rule. And we always read aloud. Okay, Richie, back to you. All right, true. Yeah. Um love uh, lovely. Thank you so much. That was an awesome set. Love the cover pieces too. Um yeah, Tumble Words, if you hadn't heard about it and you are an aspiring writer, I highly recommend it because it just again it's generative writing. You write and then you share what you wrote. Simple as that. And again, you don't even have to you write whatever you want. Um, but there's usually an awesome uh someone leading the helm week in and week out. So uh, I'll definitely let Kit promote that more as it goes along. Um speaking of again how everything's connected, this is the theme for tonight, I guess technically every week, right? But uh, we do have a writing sh uh, workshop this Wednesday, uh, the Write Slash Work series uh, hosted by Fernando and Lee, people that you most likely know. Uh, they, they, they are both awesome. And um, this week, it's going to be a writing workshop led by Cassie Holguin Petinato, local poet and author. You can find her on Instagram, La Poeta915. Um, but you guys want to write on there on Wednesday, go check it out. But she will also be leading Tumble Words, I believe, this Saturday as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you have a chance to to work with her, definitely recommend it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on, guys. We do have our online mic, and we have a bunch of people signed up. So we're going to try and keep this moving along. We're going to tune in with another Poet Laureate. This time we're going to go to South Euclid, Ohio, where we have Mr. Doc Janning Chillin there in the prehistoric flora fauna and giant dragonflies uh, gonna take us to another multiversal multiversal cosmic journey i imagine uh doc whenever you're ready take it away my friend thank you <clears throat> since this is uh, national women's month um i'm going to also read something by joy harjo from her book an american sunrise yeah, the title is Beyond. Beyond sunrise, there is a song we follow. Beyond clouds traveling with rain humped on their backs, lightning in their fists. Beyond the blue horizon where our ancestors appear bearing gifts, wrapped in blankets woven with sun and strands of scarlet thyme. Beyond the footpaths we walk every day, from sunrise to kitchen, to work, to garden, to play, to sunset, to dark and back. Beyond where the baby sleeps, her breath a light mist of happiness, making a fine rainbow of becoming knowledgeable around us. Beyond the children learning alphabets and numbers, bent over their sticks and dolls as they play war and family, grow human paths. Beyond the grandmothers and grandfathers, their mothers and fathers, and in the marrow of their bones, to when that song was first sung, we traveled on. Beyond sunset, can you hear it? The shaking of shells, the drumming of feet, the singers singing, all of us, all at once, in the song of beyond, how deep we are. And then two of mine, this is tomorrow's yet to be. In the labyrinth of life and pages and yeah, in the labyrinth of life and passages of time wrapped in moments of existence lies the stillness of being amid the ever changing stars. It is Kundun and Hineni, a journey of infinity with a, with a destination sought but unknown. And it is a song sung in all the tongues of tomorrows, tomorrows yet to be. We are what we have become and we are becoming. Streetlights and stars. 
in a place somewhere, somewhere between, between streetlights and the stars lies a place, a place of serene beauty, a place of poetry and magic, excuse me, poetry and music, a place of hopes and dreams, a place of growth and learning, a place of compassion and understanding, a place of healing and wholeness, a place of mystery and magic, a place of quiet and peace, a place of home and love. It is a place toward which we, we journey on a pathway, a pathway of moments, moments of existence and self, moments of being and becoming. And we are both streetlights and stars, a merism of us. I thank you. All right. Thank you, Doc. Do you got any uh, Poet Laureate duties coming up this week you want to shout out? or? Well, I have uh, my own uh, Zoom event, uh, Second Sunday Poets, and I'm going to throw that into the chat. In chat. So, uh, and uh, our my featured reader uh, this Sunday is going to be Sandra Feen, who is the Beat Poet Laureate of the State of Ohio. Ohio. All righty, then. That looks great. Uh, definitely share that link, and we will do our best to promote that. As I mentioned before, we do have a lot of people who run their own readings and shows, and that is spectacular. Uh, Doc Janning, everyone, go check out his work. Um, and again, find him on Facebook. Check out his book as well that's released. Um, we also have, I'm mean, speaking of, of our own shows, our next performer in San Francisco runs the Time to Arrive open mic, and we'll be featuring someone you know, if you've been here before in the past, Terry Rose Jertsen. So that's going to be super fun. Uh, it's time to move on to San Francisco and say hello to our friend, Mr. Dane Ince. Dane, how are you doing today? Oh, very good. Sir, Thank Mr. You. Sir Spam a lot. I couldn't find you because of the name. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, a moonfall. When a nine year old's mother is murdered in front of them, shot through a door, the bombs burst a dam, now the town is flooded. You bring me teenage angst like it's the Eucharist. Stand on tippy toes, puff up your chest, claim to be five feet, eight inches when you're five feet, seven inches. The rich, famous podcaster, the wannabe poet. Oh, nostalgia, claims of Poe, Kerouac, without a single drop of rain, I grow weary of my need to help more than I are aware, weary of me as well. I do not come to you for a solution. The one who rescues is the one who needs saving. I wish you would let me take care. It's a need testicular assertion of manhood comes across as <clears throat> embarrassing personality poison every self-absorbed one perhaps the best are considering that path over there far away from cooties self-pity the loss the rest i am i have I have no answer. I find no place in this mournful life full of eclipsing moons, heartache. I had a life before and before and before as dry as a sandy road. I am fresh out of ideas. Why would one want a lost thread? Paper clips, dust in the corner. At some point, it's futile to ask for more. He said, see that shimmer? I think sometimes I can see things no one else does. Feeling flat, crickets complain after dust, fireflies, Milky Way, whisper of what crumbles, cats complain, and I do not understand that I do not understand. But a while ago, he read his poem about the wheel, mumbled through flame red ginger beard, the kitchen denison traded in his good humor white jacket, hounds to slacks for standard, Beat black and willow, long-haired 
company hands held walking north on the avenue the artist stride came with confidence of the once diffident dishwasher sneer ah nostalgia wretched food poisoning i will try to keep it to myself but the big spit will not be denied and before i had a life a life i had before the drawer is waiting for me to empty it waiting to be it's terrible I love to watch the fake aquarium on the Roku, on the CGT, CGI TV. No, many may not have the peace watching tropical fish swim in the warm CGI water, waiting to be, the drawer is waiting for me to empty it, a life I had before and before I had a life, but big spit will not be denied. I will try to keep it to myself, wretched food poisoning, ah. Oh nostalgia of once diffident dishwasher sneer the artist stride came with confidence and willow long-haired company hands held walking north on the avenue for standard issue beat black hounds to slacks the kitchen denison traded in his good humor white jacket mumble through red flame red ginger beard he read his poem about the wheel but a while ago I do not understand. Cats complain, and I do not understand. Whisper of what was crumbles. Milky Way, fireflies, crickets complain after dusk, feeling flat. I think sometimes I see things that no one else does. He said, see that shimmer? At some point, it's futile to ask for more. Dust comes in. Dust in the corner, paper clips, a lost thread. Why would anyone want? I'm fresh out of ideas, as dry as sandy dirt road. And before, and before, I had a life before. Heartache full of eclipsing moons in this mournful life. I have no peace. I am, have, have no answer. The rest, the lost self-pity far away from cooties over there. Every considered, uh, it, are considering that path per, perhaps the best every self-absorbed one personality poison comes across as embarrassing testicular assertion of manhood it's a need i wish you would let me take care the one who rescues is the one who needs saving i do not come to you for a solution are weary wary of me as well more than i i grow weary of my need to help without a single drop of rain kerouac claims lights of poe the wannabe poet the rich famous podcaster claims to be five feet eight inches when you are five feet seven inches puff up your chest stand on your tippy toes like like it's the eucharist you bring me teenage angst now the town is flooded, the bombs burst the dam, shot through the door, is murdered in front of them when a nine-year-old's mother is shot in front of her kids. It's terrible. The hunger moon. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dane. And uh, time to arrive, open mic. You can find it on Facebook. Be on the lookout for that. And uh, we have... Mercedes up next. So let's go ahead and uh, Mercedes uh, jo also joining us from San Francisco. Oh, oh wait, are you guys going to switch it up? Switch it up. Uh, okay, yeah, let me. Up. Okay, let me. I took you out the spotlight. Here you go, Mercedes. What's up? Uh, so you, you. Did, good uh, to see you. Welcome back. Um, thank you. All right. Um, tonight I'm just going to read a few older poems. Um, a rondeau that I wrote a long time ago, and then two. Uh, Holiday Shakespearean sonnets. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this love is all I hoped to find. It deepens as the days unwind. My past life on the pyre I throw with wounds I suffered long ago. Old memories can be unkind. To fearful thoughts I am inclined and worries often plague my mind. Your reassurance calms me so. This love is all. To nature's flaws, we are not blind. We are mature, our face is lined. The inner beauty has a glow. As stars illumine earth below, upon my life, your light has shined. This love is all. Mm. 
we walked up to the roof on New Year's Eve to see the fabulous fireworks display. So beautiful, I didn't want to leave. Magical world in which I wish to stay. Fireworks have always filled me with delight. We watched them at the game on our first date. That was another memorable night on which I pondered destiny and fate. Love story with a pyrotechnic theme. I would write one if I was a writer. But for today, I'll stay here in this dream. Think about our future getting brighter. I feel great hope about the coming year. There will be joy as long as you are near. This is Valentine's Day sonnet. When we first met, you emailed me a link so I could see a sample of your work, a reel you made that talked about your kink, one of the things that caused my ears to perk. I sat and gazed upon your eyes and hair, that image of you stuck inside my head. So I became resolved right then and there to find a way to get into your bed. Valentine's Day Mascara Poetry. You licked mascara tears from someone's face. Enticing siren song that sang to me, imagined myself in that someone's place. You cooed your tonkas like a morning dove. What started out as lust soon turned to love. Thank you. All righty then. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to say this. And uh, again, uh, to this day, I'll remember a couple of weeks back, we had some students from EPCC listening in and uh, a couple of them really liked the, the pieces that you guys uh, read together. So that's always fun to mention. Uh, if you guys are watching right now, uh, welcome to our online mic. I know some people have kind of been tuning in a little later. Uh, if it's live, say hello in the live chat. Let us know you're here. Say hi. Feel free to, to chat it up a little bit. I know a lot of people who are here in the Zoom call with us, a lot of the performers in the Zoom call, also like to hang out in the in the live chat so you know we're there um definitely i'll give you a shout out and um again if you're in the el paso region we do have a couple of in-person open mics this week that you can check out tuesday every tuesday we're downtown uh either at mono bar or rosewood tomorrow we're going to be at mono bar and that one is uh, one of our few i think the last open mic that is also open to like anything which includes comedy otherwise i think we've kind of cut comedy out from a lot of the other shows just so people feel more comfortable but uh yeah tuesday, mona bar is like the 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 wild west one so come on out um if that's your thing and then friday we're going to be celebrating international women's day with um the love letters ep project uh, that was started by Kristen apolaka here in el paso so people uh very cool stuff. Oh, Cassie McCoy is in the house. Cassie McCoy Bullock, she's doing a writing workshop as well. Um, I'll get that info so you guys, if you guys, I mean, hit up workshops. We got so many going on, both online and in person. So if you guys want to write, there are places to write. And that's right. Okay, so that's that's it for that commercial. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue. And in fact, we're going to travel north. North, 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 a little north, right? In fact, this is where we get a little international. Our next performer, performer will be joining us from Winnipeg, Canada. Um, let's go ahead and welcome to the mic, Squigs. What's up, man? Hey, can you hear me all right? Definitely. Cool, cool. Um, for my first piece i'm gonna read a i've read this here before but that was because it's, i didn't think i'd be coming back and this is about the time of uh a time i um it's about um this one i'm calling uh superposition um uh, a bar of soap is a pack of matches in the pocket as we pray for the sun to sing the same way it did when we were young, once again. Today, I do the things one does when one does not know what to do. Tomorrow, I will do the same. Somewhere, a prayer waits to bloom. I live mostly in between breaths. It is a lesson my mother never stops teaching me. Between the dishes and laundry is the open question, how are you doing? I do as foreign objects do upon a snowman, as decoration for something to call alive. 
I opened the windows to scare the trees into becoming furniture, to become something we lie in. It is a dream they will never wake from. I smirk as I will wipe the counters of stains and the breadcrumbs, but I am sorry for the mess I've made. A mirror is an imitation of the world, no matter the shape of it. I wash this body and the water goes to waste. I just want everything to be okay again. I remember being young and listening to so many tongues to hear my voice, but we got one over on electricity, though God always wins at his games. As another bit of air dips into my lungs, I will stop accusing the cold and my eyes will always protect the color of your eyes from becoming too old. I plant my fists in the walls, I kisses against your stubbornness. A towel breaks, bleeding to tissue the heart, tired of beating. We heal in small moments. Scars close in small moments. This pain is a lie, I'm afraid to say. Oh Lord, save us. That is how I am doing today. The ticking of a clock is an invitation repeated, like breathing is trying again. That is how I'm doing today. The hardness of the world is meant to keep you together from breaking. A towel bre ble breaks bleeding, the tissue, the heart tired of beating. We heal in small moments. This pain is a lie, I'm afraid to say. Oh, Lord, save us. That is how I'm doing today. Thank you. And for uh, my next piece. I'm going to do um, a, a cover poem. Uh, this is by Margaret Atwood. It's called Corpse Song. I enter your night like a darkened boat, a smuggler. These lanterns, my eyes and heart are out. I bring you something you do not want. News of the country I am trapped in. News of your future. Soon you will have no voice. I resent your skin, I resent your lungs, your glib assumptions. Therefore, therefore sing now while you have the choice. My body turned against me too soon. It was not a tragedy. I did not become a tree or a constellation. I became a winter coat the children thought they saw on, on the street corner. I became this illusion this trick of ventriloquism, this blind noun, this bandage crumpled at your dream's edge? Or will you drift as I do from head to head, swollen with words you never said, swollen with hoarded love? I exist in two places, here and where you are. Pray for me, not as I am, but as I am. Thank you. And um, to continue this tradition of not practicing songs before I perform them, I'm going to pull out the guitar here. Um, you all hear that? Yes. Cool. This one is um, El Dopa by Laura Stevenson and the Cans. I got a bandage over my thumb for which I'm strumming, if you're hearing that twang. I tried to unscrew a light bulb thinking it was a screw, but it was, um, it was one of those you push in with the two little knobs and it's supposed to release, and I just kept twisting it until it snapped in my fingers. Anyway. My, my bright white. And I incubate in a warm yellow light in the winter. And I'll hatch on a snow covered morning. And no one will be awake to see it happen. And there is no history 
There's no expectations. Just the warm yellow light on my skin. And I'm blessed by my mother, though I'll never know her. And I'll never be lonesome again. I'm a bright entertainer in a silent theater, which I wearily quarry into. And my mother, she stands where the characters dance at the lights, at the heights of the room. And every night I repeat them phrases just to see if she predicts them changes. Oh, I'd die for a word if that's all she'd afford, but she closes up knowing it. Where I am, I'm right at the beginning of it, and all that I know I was born with. And where she is, she is fixed in a prison so fast she is frozen, the air that she breathes is a slow end. I'm a tired arachnid spinning loose on my threads, building lifetimes of gossamer beds. And the filigree of water which pours on my head, well, it absorbs every word that I said. And there are no wings Itch to my spine, just an undying urge to climb. And I'll wait for my mother, supposing she'd bother to keep me and hold me a while. Oh, to keep me and hold me a while. Thanks, everyone. Pretty cool. Glad you uh, were able to join us, Squigs. Uh, thanks. Yeah, man. Always, always cool. We had a. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let me go first of all. Yeah, there you go. Um, Squigs uh, Medio on Instagram. Uh, that's Medio underscore R N. I think right. Yeah, you got it. Thanks. Awesome. Medio on. Thanks, man. Very cool. All right, and. Uh, while you were performing, we added Cassie into the list, into the mix, a uh, fellow Canadian. So, uh, and I did give her a shout out earlier. Um, I'll let her talk about her workshop. Um, but you can f uh, find out more about that because the first one starts this week. So be ready for that. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue. Let's see. Um, so all the way from Canada, back, 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 back to the region. And we're going to stop in Horizon City where uh, a perennial crowd favorite is ready to take the mic and she just announced a tour that is super exciting so that means you know we're gonna have to like enjoy her while she's still around and, and settled in because i'm sure tour life will be very different it'd be I imagine kind of hard to tune in on mondays so uh, it's always a treat um and uh, whether it's all here online or in person she always rocks the mic let's go ahead and welcome the amazing lara lynette hey lara There it is. There you are. Hey, Richie. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Richie. Um, I get my face off of there. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm a, I'll put a little thing in the chat here in a minute about that fun stuff going going on this summer. Anyway, um, I picked these two songs for no particular reason well this one because it's a loss and then the cover i'm gonna do is um because i just felt like yodeling tonight okay so <laughs> this is a this is a song about um um uh, just trusting in that everything's gonna be all right it's called count on it coming around <clears throat> Oh, 
over the course of the decades past. I've had it so good, and I've had it real bad. I've known my share of life's ups and its downs. I've been deep in love. I've been played like a clown. But I never shied away. Stood my ground, kept getting up, and always counted on it coming around. Don't shy away. Stand your ground, keep getting up, and always count on it coming around. I would ever survive the river of tears that had me drowning alive. I said I won't let your walking out on us be my demise or shatter my vision of trust. And I won't shy away. I'll stand my ground, keep getting up, and always count on it coming around. Don't shy away. Stand your ground, keep getting up, and always count on it coming around. Ooh. When love chips start to fall. Just pick them up and be sure to stand tall. You may feel no hope can be found. But no, you don't have to take a thing lying down. No, don't shy away. Stand your ground, keep getting up, and always count on it coming around. Don't shy away. Stand your ground, keep getting up, and always count on it coming around. Coming around, around and around. Don't you shy away. Stand your ground, keep getting up, and always count on it coming around. Ooh. Count on it coming around. Thank you. Thank you. That's a tune from uh, The Journey Through. And uh, this is a cover tune by one of my favorite. Uh, I used to listen to this guy's first album over and over again back whenever it was, maybe the 80s. <laughs> I just recently rediscovered him, and I, and this song is, it's just a pretty little um, melodic love song, basically, uh, by Hal Ketchum, and it's called Five O'Clock World. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Mornings to keep a job Gotta fight my way Through the hustle and mob Sounds of the city Pounding in my brain While another day Goes down the drain It's a five o'clock world When the whistle blows No one owns a piece of my time There's a five o'clock me Inside my clothes Thinking the world looks fine, yeah. Gotta lay you on. Gotta let you on. Trading my time for the pay I get. I'm living on the money that I ain't made. 
gotta keep going, gotta make my way. But I live for the end of the day. Cause it's a five o'clock world when the whistle blows. Nobody owns a piece of my time. And there's a long haired girl who waits, I know, to ease my troubled mind. Oh, yeah. In the shelter of her arms, everything's okay. She talks and the world is just go slipping away. I know the reason I can still go on when every other reason is gone. Cause it's a five o'clock world, she waits for me. Nothing else matters at all Cause every time my baby smiles at me I know it's all worthwhile Yeah Yo lady Thanks, folks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Lara. And also, oh, before Thank we you. move on, uh, how, how can people find your music online again? Or just you, support you online? Uh, 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 yeah, SoundCloud, Lara Lynette <clears throat> on SoundCloud and Spotify. And I'll put a little thing in the chat. Got, uh, I'll put a link in there, too, to the uh, web page that my friend Mandy has thrown up. I threw it on Facebook. Uh, uh, yesterday uh, so if any if you know anybody over in the UK uh, direct them to that and then come catch a couple of our shows over there if you're inclined thank you Richie thank you for everything you do sir yeah I mean I thank you like uh, <laughs> having you come on and play it just uh, enhances everyone's enjoyment of all these shows so uh, you. if you're in the past area let her, it does come to a lot of our open mics in person so you know, yeah. catch her before she goes off to her UK tour, um, <laughs> which uh, is going to be really fun. Um, follow her music if you haven't already. Um, I have her CD, which is super cool. It's it's there in my in my room right there uh, on my desk. But um, uh, what I was going to say, we have our next two performers. We're going to stick around in the area. As I mentioned, this is on online mic, and we're based out of El Paso, Texas. Our next two performers are going to be joining us from El Paso. But what's really fun is after those two performers, we're going to get to go international again because we're going to go to India and Canada. So super excited, kind of a preview of where we're going. But uh, right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my my co-host second commander for these shows he uh fills in from time to time the host including our illustrious 200th episode uh you all know him as mr monday night aka kit ren kit go ahead and take it away when you're ready man thank you richie thank you everyone all right well um thanks especially the propaganda poet for making people read me that's everyone's that's every writer's dream is a captive audience um all right, we're going to run a couple of things up the, from the notebook, up the flagpole, see who salutes. So, would I love a flat desert? Would I love a green mountain? Is it the having of both that I love that spurs me to advocacy and defense? I got this type of poem exactly right once. And she still brings that poem up to strangers, she says. So if I try again, am I a hack? Only if I fail. So no pressure. It all rides on forces that are out of my control, that I am somewhat contemptuous of. A sort of forced ironic distance is part of the costume of poet, but I actually mean it. I go out dressed like this. Do you understand that I mean all of this? Everything? That you are seeing me without armor or guard every time you see me? Thank you. 
So yeah, I don't know if that's what uh, I have dreams. This was an actually, most of these are from Tumble Wars, but this is actually from Right Work. So come to those every other Wednesday. Great thing that Fernando and Lee are putting together. I have dreams where I walk through a city of my mind, a place not enough like anything else to be helpful. The buses are clean and on time, and the people are apologetic and distractedly polite. I feel sometimes like the only person at a Super Bowl party who cares about the game. The only person walking with somewhere to go. Although I can't remember where, nor what I will do when I get there. I do my best to take the 10,000-foot view in my waking life and know that I am never the first or only. I did not discover being human one day. So I suppose my dreams carry a nostalgia for a more self-centered self. The scene speeds up. Everyone keeps their civility, but there's a change in tone and impatience. The bus runs a red light, and a frustrated muttering grows not louder, but more invasive, more resonant. This unrest has caught me off guard, but isn't that true for everyone whose subjects are tired of being subjective? The noises slow and stop, and when I open my eyes again, the street is empty, the cars in the road are empty, and they too slowly disappear. Paint first, then undercarriage, and then the frame. Like time-lapse paleontology, the way cars will be discovered under the ground 10,000 years hence. I am a dictator of my mind, and I reserve for myself the power Cromwell and Napoleon never had to make a new England, a new France, at the first cracks in the foundation. If my dreams are not quiet, if my streets are not swept and my people non-compliant, then when am I going to sleep? Okay, and... The cover, the cover poem, because musicians do it, and poets also have the right to pay tribute to the ones before. So, to go along with uh, everyone's International Women's Month, I'm going to read uh, the first line is "The Deepest" by Kim Adonizio, person favorite of mine. I have been one acquainted with the spatula, the slotted scuff. Teflon-coated spatula that lifts a solitary hamburger from pan to plate, acquainted with the vibrator known as the pocket rocket and the dildo that goes by Tex. And I have gone out a drunken bitch in order to ruin what love I was given. And also I have measured out my life in little pills, Zoloft, Restoril, Selexa, Xanax. I have. For I am a poet, and it is my job, my duty, to know wherein lies the beauty of this degraded body. Or maybe it's the degradation in the beautiful body? The ugly me, groping back to my desk to piss on perfection, to lay my kiss of mortal confusion upon the mouth of infinite wisdom, my kiss says razors in pain, my kiss says America is charged with the madness of God. Sundays, too, the soldiers get up early and put on their fatigues in the blue-black day, black milk, black gold, Texas tea, into the Valley of Halliburton rides the infantry. Why does one month have to be the cruelest? Can't they all be equally cruel? I have seen the best gamers of your generation joysticking their M1 tanks through the sewage-filled streets. Whose world this is, I think I know. Right. And been, you've been hearing it dropped throughout the show, but the Tumble Words Project, a generative writing workshop that meets on Zoom, just like this mic, every Saturday from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Uh, just come in. Uh, our presenter will give you a prompt, and you'll write to it. We'll see what comes out of that. Uh, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. It's okay. Uh, and uh, this Saturday, it'll be 
very good because it's Cassie Holkin Pedinato, who's also doing right work on Wednesday. So she's kind of going through the car wash as one might in the anticipation of her uh, either this week or next week, her new book is coming out. So it's good that she gets to do all these workshops, build up the anticipation, build up the excitement because we are excited uh, for her. But yeah, she'll be hosting Temple Words this Saturday with a workshop called Broken Spanish is Better Than No Spanish at All. Uh, the week after that, it'll it'll be me. Great thing about running a concern like this is you can just put yourself on the schedule whenever there's a blank spot. So I'll be handling March 16th with a workshop about Shana Sini. Uh, March 23rd, it'll be Finn Bell out of San Francisco who has many uh, Zoom circles of her own. And uh, she is going to give a workshop on on darkness and light. Uh, so that's the upcoming schedule of events over here. And of course, you can see me around town. I'm the guy in the hat. And we'll get it right back to Richie. Thank you so much for their time tonight. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, shout out to the classic UTIP minor t shirt, by the way. Uh, a few like little Easter eggs almost every mic. Uh, you know, Kit wears a lot of college t-shirts with the various mascots so you know it's always kind of like a mini game within the within the show like what's what shirt is kit repping today um i know i know uh nick paleologos would always kind of enjoy that right um shout out to nick p out in new jersey another awesome poet um all right yes so thank you kit uh check out temple words we're gonna stick around in el paso and if i i might be mistaken, but I believe it is their first time here at the online mic. Uh, they've read a couple times uh, in our person open mic at Old Cheap Dog Brewery. When I was there, they shared a little bit of, um, I think, a, a play, I, I think, or some prose. Um, and they performed another time when I wasn't there, but Fernando was hosting. So always cool to welcome to the online space. So you can find them on Instagram at The Danny Show. Go ahead and welcome Danny to the stage. Hello. Hey. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to do a cover poem and two of my own personal poems. Uh, this cover poem is one of my personal favorites. It's from uh, one of my favorite books slash movies called I'm Thinking of Ending Things. This is called Bone Dog by Eva H.D. Coming home is terrible, whether the dog licks your face or not, whether you have a wife or just a wife-shaped loneliness waiting for you. Coming home is terribly lonely. So that you think of the oppressive barometric pressure back where you have just come from with fondness because everything's worse once you're home. You think of the vermin clinging to the grass stalks, long hours on the road, roadside assistance, and ice creams. And the peculiar shapes of certain clouds and silences with longing because you do not want to return. Coming home is just awful. And the home-style silences and clouds contribute to nothing but the general malaise. Clouds, such as they are, are in fact suspect, and made from a different material than those you left behind. You yourself were cut from a different cloudy cloth, returned, remaindered, ill-met by moonlight, unhappy to be back, slack in all the wrong spots, seamy suit of clothes, dish rag, ratty, worn. So you return home, moon-landed, foreign, the Earth's gravitational pull and effort now redoubled, dragging your shoelaces loose and your shoulders etching a deeper stanza of worry on your forehead. You return home deep and a parch well linked to tomorrow by a frail strand of... Anyway, you sigh into the onslaught of identical days. One might as well at a time like... Well, anyway, you're back. The sun goes up and down like a tired whore. The weather immobile, like a broken limb, and you just keep getting older. Nothing moves but the shifting tides of salt in your body. Your vision blears. You carry your weather with you. The big blue whale, skeletal darkness. You come back with x-ray vision. Your eyes have become a hunger. You come back home with your mutant gifts to a house of bone. Everything you see now. All of it. Bone. Okay, that was my cover poem. <laughs> It's my personal favorite. I love it so much. I don't know why that one, but that's what it is. Okay, so this is a new one that I've written. Uh, this is called Rocking Horse by, uh, by me. <laughs> Stay a little, guys, a little longer. 
His voice shakes behind his best efforts of manly strength, though I'm used to my mother's gentle caress and voice saying, Mija, quédate chiquita para siempre. Mothers and fathers and fathers and mothers and brothers. And the burning and yearning for four to be more than just a number, that four has meaning. Screams of terror and anguish can sometimes sound like hostile anger. Just listen. It'll happen for a split second. Because you forget that fathers are afraid of you. I dream, but not like the dreamer he punished. A dream forlorn. For her being by her lonesome, I dreamt her death that he grieved. Stay little guys a little longer. He never spoke. Shadows of us, our home, our stage came and left. Does a rocking horse still rock if no child wants to play anymore? Or does it stop when the man of the house says you're just acting like a little baby? I'll tell you when it stops. I'll finish the dream. It ends as it began. When the child grew older, and oh, Stevie, not bolder. When his little girl hammered and nailed the rocking horse into the floorboard, he shrieked. When his daughter finally said enough and went out for a fucking drink. This next one is another <laughs> personal one. Um, this is called a bad joke. It's really short, but I hope you guys like it too. Bones of a robin with eyelids of smoke. He's been slowly decaying since birth. Fair, unfunny jester. A hollow body with a heavy heart. He yearns for another. Shame. Is misery incarnate. His laughter rings in the air, but is met with loud silence. When he walks, he treads a narrow way. Who notices him on the sidewalk? They all refuse to listen. All his jokes fall flat. Oh, Mr. Melancholy, you'll die before you reach the punchline, and that'll be that. That's my last one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. That was awesome. I'm, I'm glad you're able to join us today, Danny. Um, how can people follow and support your work online? Because you do a lot of creative stuff. Like I know you sketch as well, and you do like oh, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, my personal account is um at the dot Danny dot show, but my own like writing account, which I'll uh link in the chat as well, is a uh, Shakespeare because my middle name is Shay, and I thought it'd be funny like Shakespeare. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll add it to the chat, but there I add a lot of my own um, artwork and sometimes my writing, mainly art and uh, book reviews as well, because I'm a jack of all trades, I guess. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad that you're uh, you're sharing your work and uh, yeah, Shakespeare. I love that. That's that's clever. Appreciate it. Cool. Well, we look forward to seeing you, uh, you know, every Monday we're here. If you got something you want to share and also, of course, uh, anytime you're free to check out the in-person ones. Thank you, Danny. Sweet. Uh, yeah, check out their work. Um, I'm going to say something else about that. Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> but I really loved your your poetry voice, your your reading, you know, uh, it's very calming and, and very, very clear. You could also probably, since you, you mentioned Jack of all trades, right? I can foresee you even like getting into like doing audio books, you know, reading people's poetry. Like that'd be really cool. Um I, I see it. I can I can I can see it. I can hear it. All right. So um what is up everyone? Once again, welcome to our online mic. I'm just saying hello to people who are here with us, joining in, tuning in, uh, especially those of you listening on YouTube. This is our weekly show. We're here every Monday. If you want to join us, we'll be back next Monday. So if you're just listening right now, it's it's great to have you. Um again, always let us know you're here. Say hi in the live chat or leave a comment if there's any lines that really like the that you really loved um, again if you're here from el paso community college if you're your student looking for credit um i left directions earlier in the live chat but you can also shoot me a message um several ways i left my email it's rdmarrufo at gmail.com um okay so um we're gonna go ahead and continue i kind of alluded to it earlier but this is going to be a very interesting journey because we're going to go ahead and, and visit some international friends and then we're going to come back to dc that's right the u.s capital so we're going to do a little round trip and then find our way back home at the capital so um right now um he joined early and ended up signing up he hosts the fertile brains open mike uh out of india um, he signed up as the unruly poet taster, but he's our friend uh, on here as Prasanna Kumar. 
and I uh, want to make sure you're here with us. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, and uh, good to have you. Welcome to the show. Take it away when you're ready, my friend. And you are muted, by the way. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Richie. It's been a long time uh, since uh, Wednesday is coming up, and I uh, have a small piece that I've written yesterday night. I was going to uh, present it for you. The women under the world. Under the fire letter, within the fire letters, you find the men. So I say, the women, where there is men within the indomitable persona to shine in the season. Women are not for men, but to complete being a human, the wheel of life to encircle in the emotional proportion, to maintain the balance of levels, the progeny of future and nature's blessing. Time to see the significance of those. She ruled and quelled, yet like phoenix, rose to pump the fires. The indomitable women. Men cannot be complete without women. That's the end of the piece. Women, find, within the fire letter, you find the men. So, so that is the thing, small piece. Thank you, Richie. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Dan. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, thank you, man. And uh, feel free to share the link to your your Fertile Brains open mic, the any upcoming ones, or where they can find you online, all that good stuff, you know? Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah, cool. That. All right, cool. That was uh, short and sweet as it goes. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, Fertile Brains, you can find that on Facebook. And I'll see if there's a link. Um, I often see the live stream posted on a, on a page we have on Facebook that a lot of us are in called uh, the Pandemic Poets page. A lot of these shows started during the pandemic, and so I've seen a lot of the live streams there. You can check it out. You can see replays. Um, but I, I know it's posted elsewhere. <clears throat> they have a YouTube page as well, so check that out. Um, very cool. Um, all right, we're going to continue this this journey here. And I, I did give her a shout-out at uh, the beginning of the show. Um she does have a workshop that is starting up um, that we've been trying to hype up. And uh, she's joining us from Ontario, Canada. Let's go ahead and welcome back to the show, Cassie. What is up? Happy Monday. Good to see you. And when you are ready, go ahead and take it away. Um, just... <clears throat> it's a little choppy. I don't know. If... Um, I'm not sure to do that. Are you close to your mic? Yeah, I am. Very close. Hmm. Right. Let me see. What can you do? Normally, yeah, I would say turn off on. your video. Headphones. Yeah, headphones. Uh, Richie, how do you feel about like um like somebody else like, again? Okay, we we can go to someone else and we'll come back. I think that's what you were saying, right? Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, okay, cool. I I think I think we got it. Okay, we'll we'll do some troubleshooting too if we need to. But that's cool. This is live. Um, there's a famous quote about <laughs> fuck it. We'll do it live, right? Um, so let me go ahead and get back on here. Um, it happens with technology. Every it, it's cool, you know. Cassie's super cool, so hopefully we can get you on and figure that out. Sometimes you might need to log out and log back in. Sometimes it's just an issue of that when it comes to audio. Um, it's as simple as that to fix. Sometimes, oh yeah, that's exactly what Mike Sindler wrote in the chat. Yeah, we've been here long enough. Sometimes it's just simple as right. Turn it on, turn it off. <laughs> Think some things never change. All right. So um, until then, we're going to go ahead and go to our friend in Washington, D.C., who uh, we do have on weekly. And it would not feel right if we have a show without him here. So look at he's with his big smile and everything. So I know I always feel fantastic when it's time to call up to the stage, Mr. Ed Poetastic. All right, Ed, when you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, my brother. Like no other words like thunder. Hello, my name is Ed Potastic. Oh, everyone feeling fantastic. Please take the time to join my Ryan Fawful Sublime. 
I got three poems, so I won't take too much time. My first poem, I think Errol Lux, especially Richie. Um, I edited this, so I hope it's a, a smashing hit. This is called Stiff the Monster. I was a slave born a sandy hill called Tatooine. Day by day, I have to work for a greedy fee. It was only me and my poor mother. The sun rays hurt like salt mixed with thunder. I was young, arrogant, gifted, and the chosen one. I remember being burned alive underneath a volcanic sun. I had so much talent. I even had my own Padawan named Ahsoka. She slowly strayed away from me as in nature of the law. I was supposed to bring great balance to the force. Both sides got the better of me, and I would completely off course. I wanted infinite power to save you, my precious Padme. Your warm present means. What else can I say? The rushing images of you keeps my cellnet mind awake. It was for her to every Jedi master and Sith Lord's sake. I murder younglings in their prime. That's the pinnacle of my evil crimes. It haunts me every single day. I just wanted the burning rage to go away. I force choke my Padme with this mechanical hand in her moment of need. Before I knew it, I had watered the Sith seed. Master Obi-Wan, you told me to let her go towards my deaf ears. I changed into a yellow-eyed monster that left you into endless tears. Master Obi-Wan, you yelled, I had the high ground. Before I knew it, I heard a buzzing sound while half of me was on the ground. I cursed you with my sizzly dying breath. You walked away, seeing my poignant death. I smell my burning flesh with boiling rage. I heard a sinister voice saying, he was ready for the final stage. The robot surgeons poked at my disfigured flesh while I scream in agonizing pain. A new body to hide away the hideous bald and milky stain. I heard his sinister voice telling me to wake up and rise. I'm now a grotesque monster. I stopped to ironically realize. Master Papachine said I killed my precious Padme in my erupting rage. How can this be? How can I kill the most loving, humane part of me? Now I'm the Jedi hunter. Some Jedis run. But most of them tried. I turned on my lifesaver while I see the familiar hate in their eyes. I always say, join me in the dark side. But they scream monster out from disbelief. No Jedi could ever understand my pain, sorrow, and grief. My Dark Star destroys plan to spread my Emperor's influence and reign, accomplishing my master's sinister and twisted campaign. I even destroyed that vile and sandy hell. You should, you should have seen our daughter's tears fell. My dearest Padme, can you say a prayer for me? Can you help relieve my burden in this cold, black sea? Here I stand, wheezing in eternal darkness, in anguished and alone. My red light there burns brightly, that feel so cold. Luke Skywalker, my blood flows through your veins while the force grows strong. Maybe you can save the galaxy and rewrite my wrongs. Thank you. I got another one. This is called Webhead. <laughs> A mask with wise words of great power comes great responsibility. Too bad evil doesn't have any accountability or simplicity. My spars are tingling. Day must be near. 
it's time to put culprits, thieves, and villains into tears. My RLA life being P, I mean Spider Man, I do what any friendly guy with spider powers can. I swing through vast buildings in these annoying spandex tights, trying to juggle the concept of what's wrong and right. This suit, a sticky emblem to wear, the hairy burns I must bear but never ever share. They say crying never sleeps, but God, give me a break for once. Is immediately time for sleep or a bite for a quick brunch? My mind thinly grasping my funny innocence, my old easy life of being normal, I solemnly reminisce. Mary Jane, she's always the web beneath my wings. Her presence always makes my heart swing and sing. Aunt May, she's the sweetest thing next to my heart. I make sure no or nothing tears apart. Uncle Ben, I'm so sorry, and I hope you're proud of me. I promise to be the most spectacular superhero. You'll see. But um, he always the oil in my clear pond. Push my right actions in the great beyond. Carnage. Bit him on overdrive. Every time I fight him, I'm surprised I'm still breathing alive. Rhino. He's such a dim-witted wrecking ball. Like they always say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Dr. Octopus is a genius with a heart made of vibranium steel. He's all keeps me on edge and atop my heels. Free Goblin. My best friend's maniac bipolar father. After I beat him, I need to describe him a great therapist or a doctor. Vulture, he's just a crazy bird brain. He's the bottom of common sense down the drain. Scorpion, he's a new definition of acid rain. I know his dry cleaning is a huge pain. Black Hat, she's my troll-making minx. He's sexy. Damn, <laughs> he's still a little jinx. Sandman, the crook who's fused with the sand. It really feels like me against the barren land. Electro, he's always a joint in my side. He always leaves my cell phone web shooters fried. Stanley and Kirby, they're marvelous Excelsior guys. Now they're not with us, but became stars in the vast sky. It's just my average day being your free neighbor of Spider-Man, the savior of citizens, and the punisher of madmen. Thank you, and I got my last Peace to say least, this is called M quotes. <laughs> Great moments in cinema, it always has to be the memorial quotes. No, sorry, it always has to be the memorable quotes, always leaving us on a higher note. May the force be with you. Hold on to what's true. There's no place like home. Travel outside your dome. I'm the king of the world! Set sail across this, this spiral. Propodium. See the day, boys. Make your lives be extraordinary. Make your lives more than ordinary. Elementary, my dear Watson. Think and collect in all situations. It's alive! It's alive! Get up and strive to survive. My mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You now know what you're going to get. Always be grateful and never forget, I'll be back. Come back with a snack. You're going to need a bigger boat. Don't want to die on a low note. Here's looking at you, kid. Be proud of what you did. My precious. Beware of, beware of obsessions. Houston, we have a problem. Don't put them off, but solve them. There are no crying in baseball. That's not true. Stand tall. E.T. phone home. Come back to your comfy honeycomb. You can't handle the truth. Take it so you can improve. A martini, shaken, not stirred. All drinks are tasty if you preferred. Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. Live life to your final breast. If you build it, he will come. Be true and love what you become. The stuff that dreams are made of. It's made from hard work and love. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Stay close, but don't lose your composure. I am your father. Don't question, don't bother. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Don't stop spinning and winning. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Love life and fortune will give birth. You is kind, you is smart, you is important. Be you and even if you're a butterfly or an ant. What we got here is failure to communicate. Talk it out and no more hate. You talking to me? Don't be a prick, but stay at ease. Hasta la vista, baby. See you again. 
Maybe. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Ed. Uh, and I was going to say, I thought I thought Kids Kim Adonitio poem was going to be full of illusions, but I think you had that one beat. I was like trying to check them all off in my head. Like, okay, okay, I know that one. I know that one. Um, for the fine people watching at home, Ed, how can people follow and support you online? You can follow me, support me online while coming to this wonderful open mic that makes our Mondays nice of delight in the wonderful protested spotlight. All right. But you want to follow me, please feel free. My face was 80 for me, and my IG is 80 from 92. And remember, if the mic is right, I'll be there to shine fantastic insight. If you send me a quest, you take a guess, the answer is yes. Hope everyone stays safe, healthy, and blessed. Never stop spewing the wonderful words inside your chest. Never stop feeling and doing and being your best. And remember, you are more important than you ever know. Don't stop your glow and never ever stop your flow. So you don't know, now you know. Woo! <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's the that's the sign off from the one the only Ed Potastic. Go check him out online um on Facebook. Um all right. I think we're gonna go ahead and, and try and see if uh we get some audio from Cassie this time around. We had her tune in, uh tune in, <laughs> tune in and tune out. No, not that one. Uh try and log in again. But let's see, let's try, Cassie. Let's see if your if your mic is a little better this time around. Really all quick. Right. There I am. Oh, I, I hear you. Okay. Is it any better Perfect. then? Or? It's way better. Oh, my. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I guess I better uh, get stuff up here then. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so I pulled some out of the vault here. It's interesting because my writing is very different now. Uh, but I'm going to read a piece called Mind Overflow. When your thoughts overflow and have no one direction to go, the mind spins and you begin to need to let some out. You are filled with excitement, anxiety, passion, and fear. When you lose control of the quantity and the quality of your individual thoughts, and you can't begin to express them as singular concepts, but you find yourself needing to express them all at once, you will find them seeping out without your consent. Your intellect will not be compromised nor will it be reinforced. You will find creativity, emotion, and non-consensual verbal contributions spill over the rim of reality out into the stratosphere and burst out through to the stars. This next piece is called Flux. <clears throat> Sentence fragments strip from your spine. You move soil too rapidly beneath the tattered edges of your feet. Ground slips quickly, escaping. You are your infinite capacity. You are your limited capability. You are swaying in between. <clears throat> and I have another piece here. And uh, this one is called Potential. Potential reaches out, grasping for substance. Quality is not finite. You are attainable. Reach back. Potential has a ten tendency to do that to grasp out, trying to find you, watch for the glimpses of its figure. Um, and I just have one more here. Okay. <sighs> this is called Waterfall in Reverse. Every thought checked twice, but I have given up on assessing whether I am not even nice. When it is important, the thoughts loop backwards, falling over and over themselves in an endless cascade of doubt, of I'm not sure's, of I must find outs, their force rushing, overflowing, growing, forcefully overflowing. I kind of screwed up a line there. <clears throat> um, all right. I am a haunted house where the ghouls beg me for certainty. They are afraid of intruders not seeing the irony themselves. All right. I wish I hadn't stumbled over that last one, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and plug it. Uh, it feels silly because I've been talking about this for a long time and things have delayed it, but I am, uh, facilitating a workshop surrounding the theme of poetry as an invitation into curiosity. Uh, it's starting this Wednesday. There are two separate 
uh, time slots for people, folks in different uh, time zones. Uh, and I was going to show a poster for it briefly, if that's okay. Am I good to go there, Richie, to do that? Yes. Sorry, I was no, reading what? YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good to go now. Go ahead. Thank you. I don't know. Better make sure I have the right one. All right. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's beginning this Wednesday uh, uh, at 4 p.m. or alternatively uh, Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. This is Eastern Standard Time. Um, so just to give you a little bit of understanding of uh, what we're going to be looking at. Um, so when I say an invitation and curiosity, we're going to be looking at how poetry invites us as the reader to be curious about a whole myriad of things uh, from the internal worlds of others to our own internal worlds, so poetry that kind of encourages us to be introspective, uh, to being curious about how the world around us operates. It's like in a sociological respect to like other people, but also how nature operates, the universe operates, things to that effect. Um, and yeah, much more. But uh, if you're curious, you can go to uh, my Instagram at Relentless Intrigue. I'll put a link there in the chat. Um, and I will put the Google sign up, just throw the Google sign up form there, just in case anybody is intrigued. All right. Thank you, Richie. So, no, thank you, Cassie. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're relentlessly intrigued, you would, you would also say, right. Um, I liked, I like that. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Cassie. Let me go ahead and actually get back. There we go. Um, yeah. Check out the workshop. If you guys have a chance, uh, I'm signed up for it. So I'm going to, I think I'm free to make it. So that's really great. Uh, it worked out is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I want to give some shout outs to people. So Alond Alondra, thanks for sticking around on YouTube. I know you were here like early on in the show. So um and and uh lots of love on the YouTube chat for uh Danny's set. So that's really cool. Rebecca, good to have you on here as well on, on the chat um with us. Anthony, um yeah, good to see all you guys here in the chat with us. So just give you guys some shout outs. Um I was gonna add something to that and I can't remember right now. Um if you guys want to join us for future Monday night mics, there are several ways you can be up to date on when we post the sign up sheet. Uh, one, you can follow our link tree. Um, I did post it earlier in the YouTube chat. Uh, we have a link tree account and you could subscribe to it. Every time I put out a new link to sign up, that's the first one that goes out. So um, you'll be notified first pretty much. Uh, so you can sign up. Um, you can follow us on YouTube. Um, every, I, uh, I, Put up the video like a couple days before uh, that we will be using to go live and then of course on facebook we do make event pages so you guys can follow that as well um like i said we have tuesday at mona bar and friday at craft rhythm and brews uh, that's this week so if you guys have a chance to check it out i highly encourage it even, even if you don't want to perform i'll say this it's always really nice to have an audience you know, because sometimes the audience is the performers, which is fun, but it's also nice to just have people who are there to support. And uh, I think, uh, you know, maybe you might like it and want to perform after all. Anyway, uh, but um, as with any show, we it's time to start coming to a close. And as we've done many, many times before on Mondays, it's time to bring in our closer, the man who will finish up the show. And it's always a journey. It always is, and that's life. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome to the Monday Night Online show, a man with a genre onto himself. Let's go ahead and welcome Dan, the man. Dan, take it away. Yep, how's everybody doing tonight? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to see if I can make this quick. Uh, since uh, this Friday's International Women's Day, well, what can we say? Ladies represent. It's Ladies Day. That's right. So, <clears throat> yep. So, heaven sent that all these ladies. Well, well, it's just frequent. And we need to prevent discriminate. Yep. So, represent. Ladies represent. 
Yeah. It's so well, so it's well spent. Oh, it's frequent. And yet, the ladies were all meant. So, it makes sense. Well, it does have some good sense. Well, come to the defense. And then, so we have common sense and we've got every single evidence dollars and cents. There it is. Once again. Thank you, Mike. All right. Um, I just recently uh up filmed and uploaded the uh the one he up the Dan the Man's weekly update for leap year. So if you guys uh follow me on on Instagram and you'll see what says Dan the Man's weekly update and just check it out for leap year. So well, that's very nice. Um. <laughs> That's very nice for leap year. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great night, and hope to see you guys next Monday. All right, Richie, let's go ahead and call it a night. All right, Dan, being a secret producer, I uh, appreciate you. Cool. Uh, hey, you did a whole set with no mic issues. You went straight into it, in and out. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. We still need to we still need to replace the batteries on that on that smoke detector though. I can hear it, you know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us. Check out, um, yeah, you could see Dan around. And um, what else can I say? Again, uh, for those of you who are kind of tuning in late, and if you're from EPCC and uh, want uh, the QR code for the Downhill Passport, just shoot me an email. Um, you can find me in the school directory. You can just look up my last name, Marufo, M-A-R-R-U-F-O. I, I teach English at Rio Grande campus, so you can also find me there. Um, a lot of ways you can message me. I left my email, um, and I just realized I have no self-preservation skills. You know, I'm like, this is me. You can find me here. Here's my email. Here's my security card. Here's my uh, bank account. Um, <laughs> but that's going to be it for the show. As always, uh, I want to thank everyone who performed and everyone who uh, tuned in with us during the live stream and was in the chat. Thank you, guys. Um, of course, this show is going to stay on our YouTube channel as a video on demand. So if you guys want to watch it during the week, you guys are more than welcome to. Um, Kit at some point goes through and adds timestamps, which is really helpful. So if you guys are documenting your performances, you can uh, use those timestamps as a reference. And uh, lastly, we hope to see you next Monday. Uh, my name is Richie for the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. We'll see you next time. Have a good night, guys. Um, by the way, we do have an after party on the Zoom. So if you ever want to join us and, and you don't have to read, just want to hang out and talk and chat, we're, we're here. So you can join us. Um, you can join us the same way you sign up. There's a link to the room, but I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.